Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today I'm gonna answer the question, does Humble Mechanic ever have a bad day at work? This is episode 98 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. So I get this question in one form of another, and that's, do I ever have a bad day at work? Like, where the day just goes completely sideways, nothing goes right, everything falls apart. The short answer, I do. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Rain Eater Wiper Blades. Having good quality wiper blades is very important. It's also one of the most overlooked safety features. In addition to that, it's one of the easiest DIYs on a car. So if you want an awesome quality wiper blade at a great price, check out Rain Eater Wiper Blades at raineater.com. All right, so just to clarify, I did not actually have like a really crappy day at work today. Um, today was fine. It was just kind of a normal everyday kind of day. It wasn't like I got my butt kicked all day long and then uh, needed to hit record on the camera and just hop on here and bitch about it. It was actually, like I said, a pretty normal day. But the question comes up a lot and it usually comes up in the form of, hey man, you know, you, you always seem to talk about positive things in the industry and there's so much negative. How do you stay positive? How do you stay motivated? You know, you doing the show about whatever topic kind of re rebooted my attitude and helped me out. Well, the truth is, and let's just get it out there, there's a lot of things in the automotive industry that absolutely suck. There's customers that are terrible. There's coworkers that are terrible. There's policy and procedure that is absolutely stupid from manufacturers, from management, you know, all the way up, you name it, it's out there and it's dumb. And the thing is, is a lot of that you don't have any control over. And I think once we understand that there are a lot of things that we don't have any control over, now we can focus on the things that we do have control over and what we can do about them. So what would a bad day look like for me? A bad day for me could really start right out of the gate. First car of the day not going well. Let's say it's a comeback on a check engine light diagnosis, or I just did a service and now the customer says they have a vibration while driving on the highway. Something like that, some kind of recheck, some kind of really bad job. Generally, when the day starts out like that, you kind of get this feeling, you know, that, that feeling in your bones that the rest of the day is going to follow suit. Some of the other things that really tend to make the day go poorly for me is lack of information in a lot of different spaces. You know, being a dealer tech, people have this idea that we have just access to unlimited information. Every single thing about every single Volkswagen, repair-wise, we have access to. And that's really just not true. When you look at the repair manual as a whole, it's a huge, huge, huge document, but there's a lot of information missing. A great example is I did a DIY on the thermostat housing and coolant pipe for a Mark III GTI. Well. In the repair manual, Volkswagen tells you to note the orientation of the thermostat. There's a, a tiny little valve on it that you need to have in a certain spot. Well, they tell you you need to note what the orientation of it is, but they don't tell you what the orientation of it is. So that's all fine and good if you have a factory vehicle, but if there's ever been any other work done and you're not 100% sure that the person that did the job the last time got it right, you don't have any material to reference back to and go, oh, look, it's supposed to be clocked at 12 o'clock as you're holding the thermostat housing in a certain direction. So there's a lot of information that's simply not there, a lot of wiring diagrams that are wrong, a lot of technical service bulletins that if you search it one way, it doesn't come up. If you search it another way, it doesn't come up. You have to search you know, a very specific, weirdly worded phrase in order to find it. Information is really so critical in our industry, and in every industry really, but it's so critical in the space that we work in, and there just seems to be either a complete lack of it or complete misinformation. Misinformation from customers is another really big thing. Misinformation from advisors is a huge thing with me. That's really one of the things that, that kind of uh, puts my attitude going south really fast, is when you ask, ask someone a question, and they give you an answer and you can kind of tell that they don't really know or they don't believe the answer that they're giving you and you challenge them on it and it turns out that they don't really have an answer, they just made that up to give you an answer. Well, that's really counterproductive to the end goal, which you know our end goal is fixing a car right the first time, it's making the customer happy, and, and making money for ourselves, that's, that's our job. So getting bad information, getting misinformation, is one of the top two things that really, really can ruin my day. The other big thing that's like my huge pet peeve is people not willing to do what they're supposed to do. 
And that comes in all kinds of forms. That comes in the form of a technician getting a vehicle. It has a concern. Let's say the check engine light's on. They pull faults. It's a fault they've never seen before. And immediately they come and ask me what's wrong with it. And this is before they do any real checking, any diagnostics, any type of even looking up to see what the fault is about, what parameters the vehicle sees before it stores this fault. All this really critical work and critical information that, that they're just not doing. They want to shortcut the process. They want to come and say, hey, Charles, what do I do? What do I need to put on? What part do I need to put on to fix this car? Well, most of the time, I don't know. If this were a car that I was working on, these are all the things that I would do first before I went and asked for help. So as someone that does that and just basically asks around until they get the answer that they're looking for until someone just stops what they're doing to help them, it not only makes me mad because it kind of wastes my time, it makes me mad for the technician because you're never gonna learn this stuff. You're never gonna learn how to fix cars if you're the type of person that, as soon as they get a problem that they've never seen before, stops and asks around instead of doing the research, doing the diagnostic. I had a guy the other day, he asked me what bank, bank one was on a V6 Passat, like a 2002. It just so happened that that exact question was on our most recent round of training that was due like three days before. So I asked him, don't you remember the training? Well, he told me that he wasn't caught up on the training. So not only do you not know where bank one is on a V6 Passat, which you know, okay, to be fair, we don't have many V6 Passats rolling around anymore unless, other than, you know, the VRs now. Uh, this, again, was a car that's older than 10 years, so I understand not knowing it cold, but because it was just on a training session, it should be fairly fresh in someone's mind. So things like that, things like people just not doing the, the work that they need to do to get the answers. It bothers me because they're not willing to put in the effort and it bothers me because they're not going to ever get any better. They're never gonna learn new things if they're not willing to kind of push themselves out of their comfort zone a little bit and do the work, do the research, learn about the cars and find the answer on their own. Now, I will say when they do all that stuff, I'm more than willing to drop what I'm doing and help them walk through a problem and find, find what repair the vehicle needs. But they really need to do a little bit of legwork first so that they understand the system as well. There's also the flat rate side of it. I'm not gonna beat up flat rate too bad. I've done a couple of shows about flat rate. I'll put links in the show notes so you guys can watch that and check that out. Flat rate's not perfect. Flat rate is not the greatest thing ever. It's not the most suck thing ever. It's kind of somewhere in the lower middle-ish um, as far as, you know, how I feel about it. But the days where you come in and you work hard all day and you find out that you only got paid for three hours, that sucks. And that makes for a really bad day. And those are usually the days where you've got really crappy information, customers yell at you, your service manager's pissed at you, you were delayed on getting parts so you couldn't fix another car that you would have, you know, done really well on and got fixed. So they usually tend to kind of all pile up onto, uh, onto each other. So yeah, I have bad days. Sometimes the day just absolutely sucks, but I know that that's gonna happen and I try really hard to you know, put that day in the past when it's over. I have a nice commute home. You guys can see the scenery here is pretty cool. There's a squirrel that almost got hit by a car and didn't, so that's awesome. And, and I use that 20 to 40 minutes, depending on traffic, to basically detox, to get rid of all that bad work vibe uh, that, that may have built up from the day. Sometimes I'll call my wife on the way home, sometimes not. Sometimes I'll call a buddy on the way home just to, you know, chit chat and see how, see how his wife and kid are doing. I really like to kind of use this time to either 100% disconnect from society, minus the idiot drivers that are around me, or I'll use it to catch up on things like phone calls, recording shows, which is probably one of my favorite things to do. Other than talking to my wife, I love you, honey, don't worry. And, and use that time to, to decompress. So when I'm home and I get there and I'm, I'm already kind of you know relaxed, I don't have that hangover of work still on. And I love my job, I really do. But even jobs that you guys love, you guys know when you go to a job and you work all day, there's days that just plain old suck. So develop these mechanisms to kind of brush that off and put it to the side. Even if, you know, you when you lock your toolbox, that's it, you're done. It's locked in your toolbox. You'll get it again in the morning. So I kind of have this ramp down on the way home and a ramp up on the way in. And just know that if you're having a crappy day, I know how you feel. I've been there, I think, 
almost all of us have been there. So hopefully it'll get better. Hopefully there's something you can focus on that's positive and good and it'll help you through some of those rough times, rough days, rough weeks, because that happens too. You know, that, that means whatever it means to you. It means what it means to me. I just told you one of the things that I really like to do. I like to go out for lunch and get out of the building. That kind of helps too. Uh, sometimes I'll go get a ridiculously expensive coffee just to make myself feel better. Hell, sometimes I'll hop on the tool truck and buy a tool that I really don't need to buy just because that always makes me feel better too. So the question of the day, what do you do when you're having a really crappy day to make the day a little bit better? All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. I don't have a root beer of the day. I don't have a beer of the day, but I really would like a beer right about now sitting in this traffic. I left a little bit late for work, and I stopped and got Thai food, and uh, that always makes traffic suck. So what do you do? I'm stuck here.